Greetings, welcome back to Sarah's Vegan Kitchen. Long time no talk. I spent just over the past month packing and preparing for a move and I'm filming this from Atlanta, Georgia. We'll be staying here for the next two months or so. Left a majority of our belongings in storage in Northern Colorado and we made the road trip here with just the essentials that would fit between both of our cars. For the next few months, we'll be renting this place. Luckily, it's already furnished. And in this video, I just wanted to share some of the things that I've been eating since we arrived here. We tried not to bring too many things with us. Something I did bring though is a little jar of my sourdough starter because I really wanted to start making homemade bread again. I made my first few loaves of sourdough. I used a no need recipe by King Arthur. I'll link it down below. I misplaced my blade somewhere in my belongings. I'm sure it'll turn up at some point, but for now, I am having to score my bread with a chef's knife, which honestly is not that effective. I know many of you can relate. Moving is just very stressful and it can get difficult to prioritize good food amidst all the chaos. Lots of convenience meals had over the last month, instant noodles, frozen meals, takeout, fast food, which you know, was fun for a while, but since we've moved here, I've been so glad to be eating fresh home cooked meals again and to have the time and space to make things like bread again. So here I am preparing all the ingredients for a potato corn chowder, which I actually made twice <laughs> within the first week of getting here. And I made big batches both times so that we could have leftovers for lunch. I started out by dicing up ingredients for mirepoix. So celery, onion, carrots, lots of garlic, obviously, you know me. And then I peeled and cubed two big russet potatoes. I know it's summer and it's hot, but I really have been craving soup lately. Just it's a great way to pack in a bunch of different veggies. It's very economical, especially when you're using ingredients like potatoes. And so I think this is gonna be the first of many different kinds of veggie soup you'll see me make in my videos coming up. I sauteed the mirepoix in a fair amount of vegan butter along with a few shakes of red pepper flakes. And when they were nice and tender, I added in my potatoes. If you guys watch my channel regularly, you'll know that I always have tons of these vegan chicken style bouillon cubes in my pantry. I love using these as a soup base because they're just a lot more savory than standard vegetable broth. Then I boosted the umami with some onion and garlic powder, added some bay leaves and I left that to boil until the potatoes were tender. In the meantime, I had been soaking a handful of raw cashews, and in order to give the soup a nice, thick, creamy chowder texture, I removed a couple of ladles of the soup into my Vitamix, and I tossed in my soaked cashews and blended it all till it was nice and smooth, and then I added that back into the soup and stirred it in, and it thickened up really beautifully. And then at the end, I added in about a cup of frozen corn and just kept cooking it to heat it through. And this chowder was just so hearty and filling and delicious. And it was really nice to have leftovers for a quick lunch. And I think I'm gonna remain in the habit of making a big batch of soup every week, just so that I can always have leftovers. And now a few quick words about our sponsor. Kometeer has created an innovative new way to enjoy coffee. They partner with award-winning roasters, brew the coffee and flash freeze it at peak freshness and then deliver it straight to your door. You receive a box of coffee customized to your preferences and there are new roasts available every single month. The coffee arrives in capsules and all you have to do is melt them to create any of your favorite coffee drinks. My current favorite drink is just a simple iced latte. So I select my Kometeer coffee coffee of choice the night before. For my latte today, I'm gonna use the Southern Weather Medium Roast Blend. It's by Onyx Coffee, and every box has these little tasting notes. So this one is milk chocolate, plum, and candied walnuts. For ice drinks, you can just defrost one of these capsules overnight. I do it in the fridge. And then I pour it over a glass of iced oat milk with a little pump of vanilla syrup. These are just aluminum capsules, so you can rinse it out and just recycle it in regular curbside recycling. And there we are, it takes like five seconds. And it's so good. It's very bold, but smooth. I definitely get those like chocolatey tasting notes. For a very limited time, Cometeer is offering a huge discount. It's 50% off your first order, plus free shipping when you order through my link today. Another thing that I made that I'm very proud of is this salad. 
We were at Sprouts and I don't know why I saw the fennel bulbs and I'd never cooked with fennel before and I just felt oddly called to buy some. So I picked some up along with a fresh grapefruit and orange and arugula. I had to look on YouTube how to cut fennel because I'd never cooked with it before. And oh my gosh, if you've never tried it, it has the most beautiful fragrance and flavor, kind of like licorice. I just removed the kind of tough outer part of it. I cut off the stalks, I saved them. I wasn't sure if there was something else I could do with them, we'll see. And then I kind of just thinly sliced the bulbs. Then I cut the orange into slices and cut out the grapefruit segments. Then I love arugula. It's probably my favorite salad green. I don't buy it nearly enough, but I feel like I'm gonna have arugula salad on repeat while I'm here. I dressed it really simply with some olive oil and fresh lemon juice, some salt, and I tossed it with my sliced fennel and layered it with my sliced citrus. And then I also added on some thinly sliced red onion. And of course I sliced up some of my homemade sourdough mini baguettes to serve on the side to make it a bit of a more substantial meal. Although, you know what? I have been eating much more intuitively lately. So I feel that in the past, I would have felt the need to add a protein to the salad just to make it well balanced. Even though I really didn't want to add a protein and I enjoyed this combination of ingredients just as they were. So I've just been kind of loosening up, releasing the need to make every single plate this perfect balance of carbs and protein and fat, and just kind of trusting that over the course of a few days or a week that I will eventually get everything that I need. And I've just really enjoyed eating in this more free kind of way and I figured I would share. <laughs> and I took way too much footage of this salad because at this time of day we were getting the most beautiful direct light in the kitchen and it just made the citrus look so beautiful. So there's that. I've loved, love, love working in this kitchen. My last place we lived was garden level. It got terrible light. So this is one thing that I'm really grateful for and am not taking for granted while I'm here. Here we have kind of been rekindling our former love for the classic tofu scramble. For a while there, we really only wanted to purchase just egg for our scrambles and breakfast sandwiches. But you know what? Tofu is really good and it's much more affordable. And it really is a goal of mine while here to get back to basics with my cooking, to eat more simply, to prioritize whole plant foods. It really has, over the past few years, become so much easier, at least here in the States, to run out and buy all sorts of vegan substitutes for meat and dairy. And it's so fun to try all those things, and I love that they're becoming more accessible, but I have to admit there's a part of me that really does miss the simplicity with which I used to cook before all of these options were available. And I also miss the creativity that I had to call upon during the early days of my YouTube channel where I really had to try out a bunch of different recipes for seitan or for nut-based cheeses because there really just weren't that many great options in stores. So you had to be resourceful and I miss that. And that's something I hope to reconnect with moving forward. Uh, so I kind of got off on a tangent there in defense of tofu. I'm just saying I'm trying to purchase fewer processed vegan foods and be a little bit more creative in my use of whole foods like the good old days. Uh, tofu scramble coming together. Hopefully it's okay that I didn't narrate the process cause I mean, if you had to guess how many times I have prepared tofu scramble on this channel over the past six years, what would you guess? Honestly, I don't want to know. I am asking, but don't answer cause I don't wanna know. Anyway, I served my scramble with a slice of my sourdough toast and I have been topping pretty much everything with this fancy maldon flaky salt. It's the smoked kind, it is really good. Eric also left town for a few days. A family member had surgery, so he flew out to help them with recovery. And I guess, as it turns out, I'm not that motivated to cook for myself. So I basically just made this huge pot of coconut green curry soup the first night, and I had it for dinner every single night until he got home. We had some leftover yellow mango that was kind of too tart to eat on its own, so I ended up chopping it up and just chucking it into the soup as well. I just used some green curry paste, some coconut milk, and a few of those chicken style bouillon cubes to make it a soup. Everything into one pot until it was tender, along with some tofu. And I had that with rice for like three nights in a row. I have just a few other miscellaneous things to share. 
I wanted to keep eating salad, so I bought a bunch of curly kale to massage with some olive oil and lemon juice and salt. And I roasted up a few beets to marinate and put on top of those salads. So just wrap them up in foil, pop them in the oven for like 40 to 60 minutes, depending on their size, 400 degrees. They get nice and tender. And then you can really easily just peel the skin off once it's cool enough to touch. I cubed them and I kind of just tossed them in some olive oil, some lemon juice, some salt. I don't know if there's a good vegan goat cheese substitute out there on the market yet, but if not, I think like the Via Life vegan feta or the Follow Your Heart vegan feta would be a good addition to this. I'm gonna see if I can't start making some cultured vegan nut-based cheeses while I'm here. So maybe I'll do a video kind of testing a few of those recipes out there. This is pretty much your standard chickpea salad, except that I did add in some soaked raw almonds that I just coarsely chopped up. When I'm making this, I like to add either some sunflower seeds or some sort of chopped nuts. I just really like the texture, the extra little crunch it gives. Take it or leave it. Just really easy to make, affordable, filling, checks all the boxes. We got some really good vegan sushi. We also got some really good vegan takeout from an Ethiopian restaurant. I'll link it down below. If you live in the Atlanta area and have any recommendations for us, we would love to know. Coffee, restaurants. The food scene in Northern Colorado where we were living was not that diverse. So we're really taking advantage of that here. It's been a fun new adventure, exploring a new place. I had never been to Atlanta before. And Eric has family here, but hasn't spent that much time here at all. So we'll see where the future takes us over the next few months. We don't know if we're gonna extend our stay here. All we really knew was our time in Colorado was coming to an end and we wanted to see a little bit more of the country because neither of us has really traveled that much here before we found a new place to plant our roots. But I'll keep you guys in the loop. Thank you for watching my first video from here in Atlanta and I will see you very soon in my next video.